Before I start, let me clearly state that I am not a scientist, nor am I a student of science. I have just a basic understanding of science, and anyone with the same understanding, or none at all for that matter, can follow and comprehend what I'm going to be discussing here. So let's get started. E equal mc squared. This most famous equation of Albert Einstein forms the basis of what I believe is the proof of the existence of the superior being that many call God. Now E represents energy, M represents mass or matter, and C squared represents the speed of light times itself. Now although this equation deals with some very complex scientific principles and concepts, because of the equal sign, there is a very simple way of understanding its underlying concept. You see, in math and science, as with anything else, whenever we use an equal sign, it simply and quite clearly means that whatever is on one side of the equal sign is the same or is equivalent in value to what is on the other side of the equal sign. Let's use, for example, a simple equation such as 4 equals 2 plus 2. We all know that mathematically speaking, this is a fact. It is a fact that if you have 2 and added another 2, you would get 4. We could not use the equal sign if this were not true. The same thing is true of E equal mc squared equation. In fact, this has been proven true by the development of the atomic bomb along with atomic power, as well as nuclear power and the nuclear bomb. In other words, if you have mass or matter, which we have, and you manipulated it by the speed of light squared, which we've done, you would get such immense energy it is capable of destroying the planet Power it up. Some of the mass or matter in this universe, such as man, has intelligence. Now, I know many would disagree with that statement, but they would be using their intelligence to do so, which, by default, would make this statement true. More difficult, however, to prove is that the other matter or mass in this universe has some form of intelligence in their functions or their designs. Now, we do not need to debate or go over this for our purposes here today. It is quite sufficient that at least man is proven to have intelligence and he is made up of matter and is considered to be mass. Now with that said, let's go back to the 4 equals 2 plus 2 equation. In this example, 4 represents E from the E equal mc square and 2 plus 2 represents the mc square on the other side of the equal sign. Now we know that if we have 2 and added another 2, you can make 4. It is equally true that if you have 4, you can make 2 plus 2. Now I know this sounds very simplistic and obvious, and I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence, believe me. I know I'm stating the obvious, but just please bear with me for a second. The reason I'm doing this is because although it's obvious in the 4 equal 2 plus 2 equation, it is not so obvious in the E equal mc squared equation. For example, in the E equal mc squared equation, we have matter and we manipulated it and created E, energy. But many have a hard time understanding or even believing that we can take the E, the energy, and create matter or the mc squared, which is matter manipulated. And because of the equal sign, this equation says this is in fact possible to do Although, to my limited knowledge, it has not been done on a grand scale, 
a larger scale. No one has been able, as far as I know, to take that massive amount of energy and create a massive amount of matter. It's been done on a smaller, much smaller scale. But it can't be done. It definitely can be done. And according to Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, it shows that energy can be converted to mass, at least rest mass, and mass can be converted to energy. Now I want everyone to keep this in mind, that the law of conservation of energy states that the total amount of energy in a closed system remains constant. But this is the part I really want you to keep in mind. As a consequence of this, this law clearly states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Now keep that in mind as we move on to part two and I get into the theological theory of who and what I believe God is. Here's a fun fact for you from the Bible. Did you know that the very first ever successful surgical operation involving anesthesia was performed by God? And it was recorded in the Hebrew Bible over 3,500 years ago, which is long before modern science discovered anesthesia. Genesis 2:21 reports, So the Lord God cast a deep sleep upon the man, and while he was asleep, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And Adam, he had a full recovery without any rehabilitation whatsoever. Before we go, here's yet another fun fact for you from the Bible. Did you know that the very first and successful in vitro fertilization process was performed by God? It is recorded in the New Testament book of Matthews, chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She shall bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Very interesting, isn't it? So watch part two for yet another fun fact for you from the Bible.